quick tech tip on this Rheem tankless water heater. Now this is the uh, iconic model. And what I wanna do is show you uh, something you can do if you do get an error code real quick, just to get the water heater back into the game. Um, let me show you real quick the model number of this water heater. This is the RTGH SR11i. So what I'm gonna show you today will apply to the RTGH SR models. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have any hot water, you've gone to the faucet, shower, turned hot water on, you're expecting hot water to come out, but it just runs cold and it never gets warm, you're gonna immediately come to the heater. Okay, now you wanna look at this interface here. This will display all the information you need. Now on the SR models, what you're looking for is the triangle and the exclamation point flashing on the screen. Okay, that's the only indication this water heater is gonna give you that it's encountered some sort of a problem we need to do something about it. But it's not the end of the world. It is true you may need to call tech support, you may need to have somebody look at it, it might need a part, it may just need to be reset. One of those things is gonna fix the problem. But at that exact time that you see this, what we wanna do is try and get the water heater to work. Maybe you need to wash some clothes or maybe you need to take a shower. I'm gonna show you how to do that and you can address the issue later with the water heater. All right, this particular water heater is in service. It is working. There are no known problems with this heater. It is also important to note that if you are encountering, encountering errors with your water heater, to check the gas supply, check the gas pressures, and also check the venting. Improper gas supply, pressures, and or venting will cause issues with your water heater. Okay, so if you have a situation where your display is lit up, It'll say 120. Uh, you've got a flashing icon up here with the triangle and the exclamation point. Do this, push service. Okay, and actually, you know what? Let me back up real quick here. Um, this happened the other day. Someone posted online. Okay, what I've done is I've locked the user interface here. You can see the little lock icon on there, okay? And when I'm pushing the buttons, nothing happens. And I saw someone write, and I think it was on Facebook, that they're pushing buttons and nothing happens. Or they were, I don't know where they were. They were nothing was happening. Who cares where it was, right? Unlock, lock, hold three seconds. The two middle buttons, status and service. You got that like, lock icon on, death is gonna happen. So let's unlock that. I just want to start there, just in case you've got your interface locked and you're pushing buttons, nothing's happening. You know how to solve that issue. Okay, so unlocked. Go into service, go into current alarms and look, enter. Current alarms, current alarm two, enter. Current alarm three, enter. Okay, current alarm four. Now you'll notice there's no alarms because this water heater is not having a problem. Here's the deal here, okay? What I want you to do is any alarms that are present, notate those. Write them down, take a picture of them. We need to know what it said, okay? But down, whether you scroll up or down, goes to clear alarms. You must scroll up to yes, and then hit enter again, okay? Once it goes back, it'll go back to no, you can hit back. Here's the issue that I've seen a few times on current alarms is the technician will go into clear alarms and hit enter and then back out of it. Okay, well, it prompts you again. You've got to go to clear alarms, and then the water heater wants to know if you're sure if you're gonna clear alarms. Now, once you clear those alarms, if there's a 61 or a 63 code or something in there, this water heater is gonna fire up. All right, now, if you're late for work, you need to get a shower, you need to get somewhere, that's the time to do it. Go hop in that shower, take it, use your hot water, and record or at least notate how long that alarm clears and if it comes back. If it's a 61 or 63 and it doesn't come back, don't worry about it then. Just let it go. It's likely okay. You ever reset your computer, your computer starts messing up at home, you boot a reboot on it and it works fine. Same thing here. This thing's tech heavy, super smart water heater, okay? It's gonna reset it and it'll work. Now, if it does keep coming back, you'll know, all right? If it comes back um, every other day or every three days or every week, then we know at least what the pattern is. And if you need to reset it to get hot water in the meantime, while you're waiting for a technician, you're waiting for uh, parts to come, you can uh, use the water heater. All right, now also here, when we go into service, um, we can also see alarm history. I'll show you one here, might be a history. So this in the history 
has a couple of uh, codes. So we've got one here. It'll scroll across. I missed what number it was though. 113, okay. Alarm history two, 113. Alarm history three, 113. Alarm history four, 113, P1. Okay, alarm history five. Let's see how many this will hold, six. Okay. Clear history, yeah. Let's do that, let's clear history. Gotta go to enter, gotta go up to yes. Yeah, I'm sure. Clear, boom, all right. Now we're back. This is what you wanna see, okay, once you reset all the alarms. All right, you wanna see all of this lit up, set point 120, uh, Wi-Fi if you have it. If you don't have your water heater set up on the Wi-Fi, I, I would uh, suggest you do that. And then um, your cloud. Now, once your water heater starts running, I'm gonna simulate this real quick. I'm gonna run some water, and I'm gonna show you what happens on the display when water's running and this thing's working. Okay, fan kicks on, it's telling me that. Heat, boom. I'm gonna hold the pipe over here where the water is running. And sure enough, it's hot. Okay, I'm gonna shut the water off. It's gonna show the burners off. It's gonna do the post purge. Fan's gonna run a little bit after the burner kicks off just to clear out any fumes. And then it should shut off. Like I said, if you get an alarm, you don't have hot water, you've got power to the interface, go ahead and check it notate any current alarms, clear them, get the water heater working, and then use the water heater. And then you can call tech support later, call your plumber, your technician. If you are the technician, you can work on it later, whatever, you gotta get some hot water. Like I said, get somebody cleaned up, get out, get to work, get to school, do that, and then come back and address it later. If you're getting a 6.1 or a 6.3 and you clear it and it doesn't come back, don't worry about it, okay? Like I said, I've had several of these where I've done the reboot procedure, which is basically clearing the alarms, maybe turning it off, turning it back on. Um, had a 6-1 on one, 6-3 on the other, never came back, okay? Uh, so don't worry about it if it's not a persistent alarm code. If it starts to become a problem, then let's look at it, we'll do some troubleshooting. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna do some uh, uh, troubleshooting on different codes, 6-1, 6-3, uh, no power to interface. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, stay tuned for the subsequent videos where we show some actual troubleshooting on the inside of this unit.